Okay, now you know your parts ready. And then you're gonna choose the uh, trimming tools. This is the uh, commercial trimming tool that come with the basic kit. Usually come with the two sizes. Uh, personally, I don't like this kind of a trimming tool, but we don't have a choice. So uh, all our trimming tool is sitting there. So you might wanna choose your own. Uh, for trimming, get this two and one needle tool. I guess we wanna find out uh, how how do you uh, put your piece into the sander, okay? But uh, before you do the trimming, uh, I want to show you. Actually, all of the trimming tool is kind of dull that it's not going to cut your clay uh, easy and faster. So if you can find uh, a um, file, okay, find file. Uh, you can just place on piece of wood and then you just file it on the inner part, okay you will get your tool sharper, okay? So that's how you get your tool sharper. And something like this, okay? Just file it. So I brought mine here. If you wanna use it, feel free to borrow it, okay? All right. It's a diamond file. And so with that, you just leave, leave the blade down? And just yeah, just, uh, just the, the blade, the, all the traditional tool, they already bevel, so there's an angle. So you just kind of remove a little bit of uh, metal from the inside, you get it sharp. Okay, you'll get it sharp. Um, use the sharper knife, sharper, sharper trimming tool will get your job done easier. Okay, so that's the, uh, the trick to you. Uh, you might want to do it right. Okay, so now our piece is ready. Uh, usually, I, I personally, I like to trim right on the wheel head instead of uh, put it on the bed, okay? Because the bed is, most of them are made out of wood. And sometimes, if you are clay, try to stick your piece, the, the wood is absorbing the water from your, your coil, and it might fall off. So, uh, I like to use it right on the metal, bed on the metal here. Last question. Yes. Where do you get the diamond file? Which one? Diamond This? Where did you get it? I got it from Taiwan. Uh, how do we get it? <laughs> uh, I think hardware store, they should have it. Okay. Oh, no. Hardware store, Home okay. Depot, Harbor Freight, Poacher, yeah. okay. Lowe's, okay, they, they should have it, yeah. Okay. Just get the fine one, the fine files. Okay, okay so, uh, before we trim, we want to sh make sure that your piece is sitting in the center, just like we did when we throw our clay. If your piece is not in the center, you're going to cut one side more and then one side less, so you're going to end up one side thicker, one side thinner, so you want to make sure your piece is in the center, okay? And before I, I do mine, uh, her piece here, okay, she didn't cut it level, okay? So this, you see that the piece is rocking, it's not level. So if you wanna trim this one, is if you try to find the center for this one, it's gonna be very hard, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is try to find your level. And I have a trick here that if you could find a bubble level here, you can just let it sit right in the center, okay? And then, you just adjust it so the bubble is in the center. And you can put a piece of clay right underneath first. Okay. So try to adjust it so the bubble is right sitting in the, in the center. Okay, that's how you level it. And when you level it, and then you can check how to center. Okay, so if you want to use it, feel free to borrow it. I don't know who's this, but uh, it's sitting in the back, so after we finish, we have to return it back there, okay? But if you want to use it, feel free to borrow it, okay? All right, so that's that piece. And uh, if you want to avoid that, next time, before you finish your part, you want to try to level. You want to trim the rim that is not even, okay? So. To to uh, to get a good job done easy, you trimming job done easy. That you need to level. Okay. So now I try to center this piece. Okay. Okay. Now 
Okay, it's almost centered. I'll try to look through it and see if that's the center. We have a guideline here, but some of the line is not very close. So uh, try to put in your clay as center as you can. If it's not in center, okay, as you can see that from a distance, you can tell that this piece is not in center. So I want to show you how to get a piece into the center. Okay, get a piece of uh, needle tool. Try to find a steady spot. Okay, you wanna rest your hand right by the splash pan and slowly approach to your pot. Okay, if you don't try to find a steady spot, you gonna do that. Your hand is gonna move with your clay. Okay, it's very hard to de detect which spot is up center. Okay, so find a steady spot. Slowly go. Okay. The wheel spin in this direction, so you don't want to end your tool like this. It's against, okay, kind of go like this direction, okay? And slowly approach it. Okay, so we're gonna draw, I draw the line all the same. So that from here to here, touched my needle tool first. So you know, from here to here is up center, right? So you have to move it back, okay? And which direction you move back? You got a whole line here. Which is the direction? Which direction? From here to here, or from here to here, or from here to here? We got a whole line here. Where the line is it? Where the line, the middle of the line, is the most of center. Okay. So this is the end of the line. This is the end of the line, right? So where the middle of the line is the most up center. So you have to push that direction. Okay. So this is the direction we're gonna push. This is the center. So we're gonna push. So what I'm gonna show you is find the line here. You put your both finger here right by there and put your thumb right in the middle. Okay, you will be right in the middle and you just slightly push that direction to the center okay so you want to do this a couple times because it's hard to adjust it okay perfectly so then we're gonna do the drawing again slowly All right so now you see I draw the line a little bit lower so you see that I'm pushing too far away so the lines come to the different side, okay, the upper side of it. So I'm going to push it back. This time I'm going to do just a tiny little bit. Okay. And do it again. Okay. Until I can draw the line in the whole circle. I know this is the center. Okay, this is the center. So. That's how you find your center. Okay, a couple times, if it's far away, then you have to push a little bit more. But once it's closer to the center, you have just do it just tiny little bit at a time. Okay, just tiny little bit at a time. Okay. So, any question about yes? And when, once you find center, then what do you do to get rid of the, the line? The line. You, just... you can just wipe it off. Okay. But we're gonna trim, so it doesn't matter. Okay, we will remove the, the line using our trimming tool to remove it, so no problem with it, okay? All right, and for the people who has more experience, okay, like me, okay, I just tap, 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 okay. Just find out which spot is up, you just tap on the right spot, you got to the center, okay? So that's the people who has more experience, but you need to practice, okay? And let me show you how to practice. So I'm gonna make a mark here. I get a chopsticks here. This is gonna be my reference, okay? My reference. Move it up, center so that you can tell that, see that it touches, right? 
Where it touches means it's up center, so you have to hit the spot. Okay. So you have to find your rhythm to uh, okay. here, 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 and then your hand gets ready. Okay. So when you practice, and usually I have my point right here around 11 o'clock, and then the wheel continues spinning, right? It's up comes to here, and my hand gets ready. So this has to match, okay? Once it comes to here, I, my hand starts to move, so match the point, okay? match the point, tap it, okay? So your view is right there, this is the corner, ready, ready, ready. And if your wheel is going faster, then your hand has to move faster, okay? That's how you practice, okay? You don't need to learn this now, okay? All you need to learn is how to draw the line and find your center first. Um, later on, you feel on, uh, uh, improve more of your skill, you can try it, uh, you can try it. But now, you don't do it. You tap and you, your parts fly away, okay? So, just to uh, let you know. And uh, now I'm just using my hand, I can censor it. Okay. Just use my hand here, censor it. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Also, before we trim, okay, before we trim, we wanna find out how thick the bottom is. Okay, you don't want to go through, right? you don't go right through it, right? So I have a way to do it, okay? So if you know, okay, this is the, the, the ruler, okay? I kind of a drill, three holes here. Um, this three hole is good for a chopstick to go through, okay? Go through. And in here, the chopsticks, I'm making marks, okay? So the red one is five millimeters, and black is 10, 15, 20, 15, 25, 30. So it's very inexpensive that get a Chinese restaurant and ask for a chopsticks like this, and get a ruler, maybe cost a dollar, through your hole, and uh, make your mark here, okay? It's right here. The ruler, you got it, making a mark here too, okay? So if I measure, from the top of the ruler to the center point here. Okay, I got a measurement. Okay, this 100, 90, 80, 70, it's about 64. Okay, 64 millimeters. And then I bring my ruler here to the side. So this is 90, 80, 75. Okay, 75 minus 64. It's about 11, right? 11. It's about this thick. Okay, 11. So you know you could trim a bit more, but not too much. Uh, usually, for myself, I like to trim the bottom thickness within three millimeters. Okay, three millimeters. It, it should be easy to do once you turn it upside down. So you just, all you need to do, to do is remember, okay, 64 and 75. And then if you trim three, within three millimeters, it means that you need to trim about eight millimeters. So after you trim, you just go and measure again. Eight millimeters deep, that's it, and you start, okay? So it's not that difficult. If you know simple math, it should be easy for you to do it, right? Okay, so, so far, you have any question about when is the right time to trim, and how to center, and how to measure the bottom? No? So, I would, uh, so those are your tools, right? So, this, so, so mm -hmm. if, is there any other method for measuring the thickness? Or uh, you can borrow mine, okay? okay? <laughs> uh, or you can make your own. Um, there's another uh, tool that more, even more precision. It's the, the uh, caliper, uh, okay? Yeah. They can stick out. I need to measure that the depth. Okay, you can use that too, but that costs a little bit more. Those tools aren't available here in the 
shop? No. Okay. It's my um <laughs> And those are inexpensive, so you should, uh, if you want to, in the long run, you want to do uh, pottery, more of uh, them advanced, can uh, just buy your own. Okay. Oh, by the way, I forget to, uh, to warn you, okay? <laughs> Some of you might do this, okay? So we, now if I find the center of the pot, right? So we try to use the clay to secure it. Remember when you try to skewer, squeeze your clay, hold down the pot, hold it down, okay? If you don't hold it down, you push your pot away. Okay, so hold it down, then you squeeze it. I usually put four pieces here, but if you are worried about right away, you can use the whole coil to uh, put it around the clay in a circle. Okay. All right, so now trimming. For larger area, I usually use a larger one to trim. And when you trim, again, when we throw, I told you about S's, right? Three S's. The uh, trimming, one of the S applies here too, is support, okay, support. If you try to trim your part like this, you don't have support, okay. Your, your, your tool is moving back and forth. You're not gonna cut a very nice surface. So you're gonna find a support. So I usually rest my hand here, and maybe I put my hand here on the side of the clay, and rest the tool right by my thumb. This is how I cut it. So the tool is holding by my left thumb here, so it's more steady. And uh, I find out a lot of beginner when they trim, they tend to, they are afraid of uh, the speed of the wheel, so they spin awfully slow. You know, when you trim, you want to trim, you want to spin your wheel a little bit faster, okay? A bit faster. And moving your tool slowly. Spin faster, move your tool slower. And here, I wanted to make sure that is level. Um, before I trim further, I would like to use a needle tool to draw a guideline here. Okay, so this is gonna be my foot ring here. Um, I could remove the clay in the center. Okay, I could trim it a little bit deeper. And for the inside part, I usually like to use a smaller tool to do that. And here is the, the center, okay? So when you are using the tool, you not, if your tool is crossed over here, you see that the, the clay is gonna push your tool down. So make sure you start from the center point and then you cut it to your right, right hand side, okay? So cut the corner here. And I drag my tool to the right hand side. And with a sharp trimming tool, you will get your job done easier.
right? So, like I told you, you want to know what's the right thickness right here. Now it's about six. So I have two more millimeters to go. I would say this is about right, okay. So now I wanna make sure that, you see that little bit of roughness on both sides of the foot ring. So I'm gonna hold my tool here. Just lightly trim. After I done, you see that there's a metal part of here right by the trimming tool. I could use that to compress it. Okay. Even finger to compress it so that the foot will be smooth. Okay. You don't want your foot to scratch your table. Okay. So make sure you compress it. That's the trimming. Uh, and if you're gonna put some uh, decoration lines, okay, you just use the corner of the tool. So put some lines here if you like to do some decoration. Okay, so that's the uh, trimming. Any question about it? Yes. yes. If you have a, a larger piece which guards from the walls, mm -hmm. uh, it can collapse. The chuck is very hard to work with. Uh, the chuck, how? Do you you have a small opening on top? No, <laughs> it's, it's that have the weight of the piece. Mm -hmm. It may collapse if it's very thin. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to hold up by having the chalk hold up okay. only because of the weight. But it may not stay level, it may not stay in the same Okay. Position. Yeah, um, well, if the piece is very thin, you don't need to trim. Uh, yeah, but the base might not. Have the base? Okay. Uh, then uh, you could uh, wait your the wall dry a little bit more. Okay. You don't want to trim it too wet. So once the wall is dry enough, it still has strength to hold the weight from, yeah, from the top. the same thing, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure how to do it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so how, do you, how do you do the trim the, the, the rim? Uh, normally, on this part here, you don't need to trim. Okay. So when you make it, you make it nice and perfect. So you don't need to trim. Uh, all you need to do is just trim the bottom. But if you want to trim, you can turn it upside down. And then, yeah, you re it and you trim it again. Okay. You trim it again. But when you make it, you use a, a, a nicer rib to rip it and then use a chamois to, to <coughs> smooth the rim. Basically, you don't need to trim the rim here. Unless you want to trim it, that is very thin looking. You can turn it upside down and trim. Otherwise, you don't need to trim the rim. Okay. All, all you care is the bottom. Okay. So that's the uh, trimming. You want to pass around? Feel it? 